Welcome to the Fiber Shop tutorial series. This is Hamid Memar, and I'm going to walk you through the learning path of Fiber Shop software. But before starting the software tutorials, let's take a look at the history of hay cards to realize what they are and why we need them in 2022. At the early stage of computer graphics, graphic processors that we know them as GPU wasn't that strong and fast as they are today. So the game artists were forced to use some methods to represent the hairs of the characters. The first technique they came up with was to make character hairs using vertex painting or texture painting the hair over the model. There was no extra polygons added so it could run fast enough even on potato GPUs. Take a look at this Minecraft character that has all the hairs painted on its geometry. After a decade when the GPUs become more stronger and capable of handling more polygons and draw calls, artists came up with the idea to add some polygons to the model that represent the solid shape of the hair. Take a look at the evolution of Lara Croft from Tom Ryder. We have some polygons here that is unified to the model. It was a pretty good idea at the time. After a while, with the performance enhancement of graphic cards, we could have more and more polygons on the screen, so we ended up with some new ideas for real-time hair generation. And it was hair cards. A hair card is a polygon set that represents the hair of the character using a special textures that contains pre-rendered hair strands that we call them fibers. I don't know who started the idea of hair cards, but if I remember correctly, it was started in Poser and Dash 3D and it was known as volumetry hairs, face hairs and something like that. Years later, Nvidia came up with a new real-time hair system which was simulating actual hair fibers on the character that was called Hairworks. It had a good performance on GTX cards. It was used in some big types of games, but still, it wasn't that good and it could waste lots of resources in the situations we need to render heavily detailed scenes. I can say in the near future with Arctic cards we can have the fully dynamic realistic hairs on the game characters, but for now we still need to save resources in the terms of good performance. And don't forget, not all of the games are designed for monster PCs. Nowadays, Artists extended the hair card techniques to a very fantastic level which represent a very realistic and high quality hair and it's optimized and very lightweight and totally usable for real time rendering and video games. Now that we know what our hair cards and how they work, let's take a look at how their texture is created because two very important factors in hair card generation are 1. Hair cards placement 2. Hair cards texture in the early age of hair card texturing, artists were using cinematic hair tools and their DCC like 3ds Max, Maya, Houdini, Blender, and so on. The downside of this method is it's very time consuming and it takes a long process to produce the textures, like styling the strands, rendering channels, mixing them up in the texture editing software like Photoshop, testing them using a game engine and real time renderer, and simple words. That was hard. But today, you can create your haircut textures in no time, style them using modifiers, bake them really fast, and see the result at real time. This is what Fibershop is all about. Now, let's finish the chapter by watching some artworks created by Fibershop. See you in the next chapter.